Hey everyone, uh, we are back working on our bus today. Today I will be going through a few things that I'm going to be doing with the roof transition. Hopefully I'll be able to show you some things that will help you on your roof transition if you've done a roof raise. I'm Victoria. And I'm Rory. And these are our two dogs, Misty and Kida. And we live in beautiful British Columbia, Canada. We are converting our 2004 Thomas bus, named Freedom 25, into our home on wheels so that we can get out, explore, adventure and do more of the things we love. Because experiences are more sacred than materials. I've decided that I'm going to weld my transition sheet metal on. Um, the rest of the bus is already done, so the trans transition is the only thing that still needs to be completed. We've taken a break through the winter and we're back at it. Um, I'm having some electrical issues with the bus. I've been kind of fighting with it off and on throughout the winter, um, but I just decided that I needed to move on to something else and I'll come back to it later. We're, uh, we're unable to start the bus. I don't know what I've done to it, but I'm sure we'll figure it out. Like us and uh, subscribe down below because it really does help us out and uh, we love to hear from you guys. And don't forget to hit that bell icon if you want notifications on our upcoming videos because we're going to be putting out a bunch on how to build your schoolie. All right, here we go. All right, so my first attempt here to try to trace out the roof transition sheet metal, which I have on a sawhorse down below. Um, I'm hoping to draw I know this seems silly. I'm hoping to draw lines on this poly. I just had this stuff kicking around. It's something I had. Uh, I've seen a lot of people go with like bristle board or something like that and cut it out. But uh, I just don't have any right now so I'm going to try this. I'm going to draw the lines out here that I need to and I'm going to go down this center post. Uh, just as a... Hopefully I'll be able to make a template and then transfer this over to my sheet metal, cut it out roughly, and then try to fit it a bit better up here with a with a grinder and a cutting disc. So yeah, I'll see if it works. if this works. <laughs> I'm a little unsure about this uh, this design. Okay, I'm gonna hop down on the other ladder and scrap the other side. All right, just gotta make sure that this stays where I want it but is also kind of tight. I mean, it's not going to be perfect. Obviously, I'm going to have to do some some shaving and some stuff to it. Drew a line coming down this way. Just kind of straight down roughly, like I'm going to cut this uh, probably a bit bigger than what I draw on this plastic, just to just to be safe, I don't want to waste the sheet metal. Uh, and then I've come straight across uh, here, because I want this sheet metal to actually sit down inside that drip edge, uh, so it catches any water and gets rid of it away from my window that's going to be here. Uh, and then also here, just continued my line down. I know this is really wrinkled. That's why I'm cutting things bigger, just, just in case uh, it's not quite the right size. So, let's lay it on the sheet metal and see what it looks like.
on this side. You can see it's pretty curved and that's the bottom, bottom left. And then up top, it's not so bad. It doesn't curve very much at all until the very end. So because this sheet needs to do both sides and then I'm gonna get another piece to do the, uh, the middle, I need to mark out right now where halfway is on this sheet. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, take my marker. I know this is in there, right, mark all the four corners so that if this sheet does move in the wind or something like that, I can uh, put it back where it needs to be. Again, this is just rough for now. When I get it up there, it'll be, uh, it'll be like probably way too big. All right, so now I got my corners marked. Make sure everything's sort of lined up there. And just come underneath here and draw some lines. These cutting discs suck. They just disappear. Like what the actual? That cut was three feet long. This whole disc, gone. Pro tip of the day, always unplug your tools when you change out a blade. So I've got my first piece uh, on here. I had to use two straps. I don't know if you can see, yeah, you can see those. Two straps, one at the top, one at the bottom. I, I uh, clamped it down below and then I bent it over the top. And then what I did is I got my grinder and just came along the edge here and trimmed it up. And now I am starting to put a bead of weld. I'm gonna weld this top edge and the bottom side I'm gonna just silicone and you'll see why, because there's a, uh, a piece of fiberglass down there so I can't weld. I spent the majority of the day yesterday getting this piece in. Uh, my camera ran out of memory so I had to bring it inside and I uh, just was on such a roll that I decided to leave it inside and just continue on. Uh, which is a good thing because now I kind of know what I'm doing. <laughs> you can see I welded the whole top there and then ground it down a bit. I will do uh, some Bondo work up here so that it's a little nicer. Uh, yeah, anyway, and then I put two just self-tapping screws in for now. Um, but it's, yeah, it's pretty solid, like, it's, I mean, not right here, but around the, the corner there, it's really solid. And this down here, I'm just going to rivet it all in uh, later. Once I get my next sheet, it's going to overlap this and sit right here and cover that all up. Um, but I have to do the other curved part first and then I can put my final sheet on the on the top so again I'm just gonna start by cutting out the rough template here that seemed to work pretty good for me yesterday so I'll start there and then bring it up and I'll clamp it in just like that I'm about to put the uh, piece on here and clamp it up
So this is definitely the wrong angle. I'm gonna have to cut a bit more off the bottom here. Hopefully this is the right angle. And what I'm going to do now is um, take my grinder, take my grinder and just cut along this edge here so that it fits underneath this fiberglass. So once I get this cut and tightened back down, then I do the exact same to the top side here, and then I'm going to run a bead of weld along the top. But make sure everything's nice and tight before I do that. Once I've taken a bit off like that, just come back here and tighten things up. All right, so I got the bottom cut. Just climbing my ladder here, you can see it's cut there. Uh, I just gotta tighten it up. But I'm moving you guys to the top of the roof. Now we're gonna do some welding. It's been a few days since I've worked on the roof raise. Uh, we haven't had really nice weather, but today, nice and sunny, not a cloud in the sky. I think you can see that even. Uh, so I'm back up on the roof. I've got my last piece of sheet metal and I'm gonna go and trace it out now. So on second thought here, the lines that I drew look pretty straight when I've got them flat on this piece of sheet metal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to the top of the bus again, I'm gonna get, just get some measurements, and I'm gonna cut a rectangular piece out of here. Once I get it on the roof, then I can scribe this bottom, because there's gonna be a bit of an arc to it. Obviously I'm over exaggerating here, but there's gonna be a bit of an arc. So I'll um, figure that out up there. So I measured from the center of my support steel at the top of the bus from to left, and then from the center again, over to the right. I had 32 inches on either side which should cover everything nicely. So 32 times 2, 64. So I'll make a mark on either side of the sheet here and then grab a straight edge or a level or something like that. I just found this piece of one by three. It's straight. Line that up with my two marks. Got a nice line. All right, now I'm ready to cut. Don't forget your safety specs. These ones are tinted. pretty rough here. So because this is a finished piece, I'm going to take this grinder and just ever so gently touch each side of this sheet to clean it up so that uh, it's not rough like that. Looks a little nicer and it also will seal better. When we put a rivet through it, it'll clamp to the next sheet 
nice and tight. Just using the side flashers as something to reference the center off of. So, and then marking right here a center line, and then I'll put it on my sheet once I get it centered as well, so that I can always have it in the right spot. So, we know we have a 64 inch sheet, so 32 inches is going to be the center of that. And then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from this point down to my where I want to cut it and make sure that it's the same as this side so that the sheet doesn't need to be moved this way. Alright, so I have a block here and it's, it's bigger than it needs to be but basically this gives me a spot to rest on the bottom where I want the sheet to sit and mark the top here. I understand that, that the, once I cut it the whole sheet will slide down but I have ample room up top and I don't have to worry about that. And that's part of the reason I kept this sheet four feet so that I had lots of room up there and I didn't have to worry because this is kind of a... I had one shot at this, this is my last sheet and I didn't want to mess it up. All right. So here we go. I want this sheet to end when it's done. Right. There. So I'll mark that line there and then I'll just keep moving it along. I kept a short piece because then it, it follows the curve. I don't want a bunch of straight lines and have like gaps in there, right? Okay, so now that I know that it fits, I'm going to just push it up onto the top of the roof and I'm going to fasten the under the sheets that are underneath it. I'll also run a bead of sealant, a nice thick bead along there so nothing can get in when I do rivet this. Gonna start riveting where I put all the caulking. Yeah, we got the rivets in all the way to the top and then all the way along the bottom side. Here's a little bit of a close-up. So the bus kind of has this, this is um, fiberglass so I couldn't, I couldn't rivet anything to it but it's got this nice seal right there so what I did is I just butt the sheet metal right up to it and um, later on I'll clean this out obviously, but I will run a big fat bead of silicone or something that's paintable and uh, run it all along there so that when the water comes down here, hits that and then, and then it'll disappear and go off to the side of the bus. So also we've uh, got the other side done here, I don't know if you can see those rivets, oh yeah, you can. All the way up that side and again all the way around the edges and bottoms. So what I'm doing now is taking my grinder and uh, looking underneath like this and then I'm going to, from the top side, plunge this grinder down in and see how close I am to the edge there of the yellow paint uh, and then make a cut all the way along. You'll see what I mean when I start doing it.
what I've done now is I've taken my welder and I've done a big bead. Now, if you're a welder, don't watch this. Uh, they made a big bead across the top just to kind of help waterproof it and then the idea is later to use some Bondo and that should give a nicer finish and also be able to, uh, to waterproof it a little bit further and then we're also going to be doing um, some sort of elastomeric coating on the top of the bus to help waterproof and to help with the sun. Uh, we are going to insulate the bus as well so that should help. Anyway, here it is. So, and I've, I've just spray painted this like ugly green color uh, onto it just to prevent it from rusting until we can get some warmer weather here and put the Bondo on. Yeah, that's basically what it looks like. And that weld goes all the way from one side all the way over to the other side. And uh, if you jump, jump down inside the bus, there is a few spots that you can see like some sunlight coming through, so there definitely is holes still in that. Uh, and then what I did down below also is I found some a product that I like. Uh, just a, It's a silicone, kind of paintable silicone. It's called Big Stretch. And basically it's just like, it stays really elastic. And um, as you can see there, I ran a big fat bead of that stuff through there to, uh, to waterproof the bottom. Now, I believe I'm going to do something else down here. I'm not quite sure yet what it's going to be, but for now that will keep it waterproof. I also shoved some of that stuff into the rivets. I don't know if that's focusing. Yeah. So I shoved some of that stuff into the rivets as well um, because the rivets that I'm using aren't necessarily waterproof. So we're going to have to do that on the whole bus eventually. But it did rain and we didn't get anything inside the bus. So that's a success. The roof transition is on and sealed up. Next thing is just some minor little tweaks to the outside of the bus, patching up holes, doing some bondo work, that kind of thing. We're just waiting for some warmer weather to do that. Thanks again for watching. We really do appreciate you guys. Um, we also really hope that you got something out of this. If you're just watching for fun, thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you are doing your own bus build, please comment, ask questions, you guys. Um, we're, once these videos go out, we're a little bit ahead of of most of the videos because I, I just don't have a lot of time to uh, to do the editing and if you have any concerns or anything that you see that we're doing that you think is wrong or just want to give us some some love please comment in the comment section down below we'd love to hear from you we are also on Instagram at freedom 25 bus and you can follow us over there for some more up-to-date information and pictures all right guys see you later